Are you struggling to create a long-form content calendar that aligns with your business goals and helps drive revenue to your health coaching business? Well, friend, if this is you, you're not alone. If you're tired of throwing spaghetti at the wall with your long-form content, today we're going to dive into how you can simplify content creation and align it perfectly with your promotional strategies So you're not just growing, but also increasing your income as a wellness coach. Creating a content calendar for your wellness coaching practice helps keep you consistent with your long form content. Plus, it helps to avoid all that decision fatigue. What exactly do I mean by long form content? Well, that's your blog post, podcast, or YouTube. It's the content that stays relevant for a long time or stays searchable for a long time. You want your long-form content to be whatever is the easiest way for you to create consistent content. Trust me, I know this for real because I have had just a blog, I've had a YouTube and a blog, and I've finally landed on having a podcast and a blog because this is the thing that helps me to easily and consistently create content. Because here's the thing, friend, consistency isn't a buzzword. It is the best way to build connections and reach the right people who will benefit the most from your expertise. Hello, friends. If you're new here, my name is Michelle, and I am so happy to have you here today. One of the key pieces is to understand your content pillars. So let's say you are just starting out and you want to create content pillars that are in alignment with what you help people do. But they're your big buckets, like the big things that you talk about. If your main thing that you do is help people with their mindset, maybe you're going to have buckets that are in mindset when it comes to eating or mindset when it comes to exercise or mindset when it comes to goal setting, like the different things that you can think of that you help your clients to overcome are going to be topics that you want your main pillar. Because the thing with the main pillar is you can create, let's say, six pillars that you're just going to either rotate through or you can do like a whole entire month of just talking about that one simple pillar. So the one pillar all in you, if you have one podcast, let's say, you have four podcasts, one per week, a month, then you can just have either that one pillar where you just keep talking about that same subject four times that month, or you can do it where you just rotate for six, every six weeks. So you cover one content pillar each one of those weeks. It's really completely up to you. But the thing is, you want to keep in mind because you want your content calendar and your content pillars to be running in parallel with your promotional calendar. You want to make sure that your content is nurturing and building your email list and having people grow with you that way. And then towards the end, maybe at the end of your time or six weeks, you can at that point ask them to join with you. Defining your clear content pillars, you can streamline your content creation process so you ensure that all of your content supports your theme or your promotional calendar that you are working to create or drive the traffic to. So how do you actually handle scheduling and ensuring that you're consistent when you have so much going on in your life and business and you feel like you're overwhelmed with everything? One of the things that I find is the easiest is to have content and planning. So planning out what you're going to talk about for the next four weeks, maybe planning out what you're going to talk about for the next six weeks, or potentially creating content, a 13-week cycle. So that's like one quarter of content that allows you to plan ahead and then you keep that fresh flow of content without burning out. So your content pillars can be in line with your 13-week cycle to allow you 
to cover every aspect of the things that you would want. So let's say that you're working on creating a new group coaching. You're going to be going from one-on-one coaching and you're opening up a group coaching because your one-on-one practice is getting to the point where you're at capacity. You can't take on anymore. So you want to have a group coaching. So what you would do is you would look at your 13-week cycle and you know all of that content needs to lead up to your group coaching that you're going to be opening. So what are the things in your group coaching, the problems that you're going to be solving? Because you want your content then to be solving or talking about all those different problems that you solve in your group coaching. And don't be afraid to create a wait list to have people sign up and join that so that they can be the first ones to know when your group coaching is open. Okay, so I want to just step back because I mentioned you want to align your content pillars with your promotional strategy. So that is exactly what I mean. So each piece of content, you want that to naturally lead to your business offer. So whether it's your coaching session, courses, or you have a workshop, you want everything to be taking them down the path to that promotion, to that thing that they can buy from you to either your email list so that they can get into a nurture sequence with you. The goal is you want to be able to help people and you want to be able to attract the right people that you are most in line with helping, that your programs are the most in line with helping, that your personality is the most in line with helping. So I'm curious, have you ever been overwhelmed by the volume of content and how you're going to actually get it all created? Well, one of the best ways is to create a content system. You can do something like Trello or Asana or even in Google Drive if that's easier for you. A Google Doc right now has a little checklist and you can always create a template and recreate it. But you just want to have something that allows you to have a consistent checklist to make sure that you're doing all the things that you need to be doing so you're not forgetting a step along the way. Because those types of things keep you organized and make it simpler to create content. Another thing that I encourage you to do if you're overwhelmed by creating content, I want you to go back and look at some of your older content that you've created. And how exactly can old content be refreshed and realigned to serve your current promotional calendar or your current business goals? Don't be afraid to revise old content. It is better than just leaving it out there where it's not relevant any longer. So Yoast has a fantastic plugin that allows you to rewrite and recreate and republish, I should say, your blog content. So if you at one point were a blogger, like I was, and then you went to having a YouTube, like I did, and now you're on to a podcast as your primary source, we'll go back into that old content, look at your SEO and see which one of those are performing the best Or look for those that are slipping in performance that were once really good at performance. Or look for posts that really aren't in alignment with where you are in your business now. Because the one thing I know for certain is we always evolve as business owners. And where we were at the beginning is not where we're at now. So don't be afraid, again, to refresh that content and make sure that it is actually serving your audience right now. Okay, so I want to give you some practical steps to be able to actually implement this today because I want you to be able to take action and it's going to be by mapping out your content pillars. Then after that, just go ahead and sketch out a basic promotional calendar that highlights those key dates and events that you want in your actual calendar. You want to make sure that you're doing it alongside. They should go in parallel because you want one to benefit the other. And before I let you go today, can I just give you some best practices for creating an effective content calendar? It starts by setting a clear goal. So that is part goes again in alignment with your promotional calendar. When you begin to create your content, I want you to take the time to make sure you know what goal you're trying to achieve. What do you want to achieve with that 
content. So are you in the attracting new clients stage? Are you trying to establish yourself as an expert? Are you building your brand? Like have a clear goal in mind that will help you create that content calendar so you know exactly what you're targeting and how you want to be effective. Do you want to know what I do when I am feeling overwhelmed and have no idea what type of content to create to go in alignment with my promotional calendar? Well, I go back and I do a content audit and I look at the content or the podcasts that have been downloaded the most. I go ahead and I look at what pages on my website are getting the most traffic when it comes to my blog post. I go to my social media channels and I look at the insights that I can see from that as well because you want to take into consideration all of those things and that will help you to identify maybe gaps that you have in your content or areas that you want to improve in your content or heck it might even stir up ideas for you to create new content. What is your target audience or your ideal client struggling with? When you're creating your content calendar, think about what they're struggling with and what they need help with because your content should meet their needs and address their pain points. Don't be scared to go out to social media and do a little poll and ask people like what is your biggest obstacle that you're facing right now when it comes to your mindset and eating for an example. And use that feedback that you're receiving from them as a way to create content and add into your content calendar. So if you know what your end goal is, that is the promotional calendar that you have at the end, that's the ideal question that you can be asking. And maybe you already have a ton of research that you've done. Use that research from creating your course or your group coaching or whatever you may be offering that you're going to be promoting in the future. And then plan for variety. You don't want to get stuck on one type of content for a really long period of time. Well, maybe you do. Maybe you don't. I guess I'll leave that up to you. But you want to have a little bit of variety when it comes to your content so that you are not just answering the exact same question in the exact same way. Because you want to make sure you're answering things in different ways because we all think differently and we may see it differently. So try and use different examples. What would work best? Like really think about who you've helped in the past and how you've helped them in different ways because your success always leaves clues. And then make sure that you're using your long form content as the primary source for your social media so that you can promote your content and make sure that you're publishing it and letting them know and ensure that your content is out there for people to find in the places that they actually hang out. And as I mentioned before, consistency is key when it comes to creating an effective content calendar. You want to publish your content on a regular schedule at the same time every week. This helps build your audience. This helps build up the expectation of new content coming from you. Because I know for myself, when a new episode is released by my favorite podcasters, they pop in there and I'm always excited to listen to what they have to say because I find their content to be so valuable and uplifting. And you know what? You may need to be adaptable. This one sometimes is a hard pill for me to swallow, but I understand I may need to adjust my content calendar if something isn't working. That's when you want to look at your analytics and track the performance of your content and then adjust your strategy accordingly. Okay, so those are just a few of the best practices when it comes to creating your consistent content. Okay, friends, it's time to wrap this up because I feel like I covered a lot today. I hope that I was able to make sense. Hope I wasn't everywhere. I tried to be spot on to my outline, but sometimes I get a little off track. But when you're setting up your content calendar, you want to make sure that your content pillars are in alignment with your promotional calendar as well. You want to make sure that your goals to your content work for you and your business. 
You want to remember that long form content that you're creating is out there forever. And it's going to simplify your process when you're looking at your business goals. And don't be afraid to actually take some of that older content when you're feeling overwhelmed and repurpose it by rewriting it and refreshing it so that it actually gives that content new life. Thank you, friends, so much for listening. I appreciate you. And if you want, I have a free resource for quarterly planner that's designed to help you set your clear goals and align your content strategy. I'll go ahead and put that down below in my show notes. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you and I hope you have a wonderful week. Yay. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you found this episode valuable and learned some actionable tips that you can implement in your business so that you can feel accomplished and less stressed. If you enjoyed this show, please take a quick minute to share this with your business bestie, subscribe, and leave a review. It helps me reach more business owners just like you. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in future episodes, please reach out to me on my website. I've created a form just for you. Remember, with the right system and mindset, you can achieve the success your heart desires. Thank you for tuning in. I look forward to chatting with you next time. I appreciate you and I hope you have a wonderful week. And don't forget, let's grow, friends. Mm -hmm.